नंबर टू प्लान ए थर्ड मॉडल ए फोर्थ टेस्टिंग एंड फिफ्थ वन एस डिप्लॉयमेंट सो नाउ वी हैव कंप्लीटेड अबाउट द प्लानिंग एंड द डिजाइन मॉडल सो फॉर मॉडलिंग ओनली वी वर यूजिंग वेरियस मॉडलिंग टूल्स एंड वी नो हाउ टू डिजाइन अ सॉफ्टवेयर दैट यू हैव स्टडीड इन द अर्लियर यूनिट्स एंड ऑल सो नाउ इट इज अबाउट टेस्टिंग सो टेस्टिंग विल बी डन once the implementation is completed when you talk about the product so once you develop the product prototype and then we uh, uh, make our product to undergo testing so from the testing we come to know any errors are there so there are various objectives for the testing so we are studying exclusively for software development so here we will be focusing more on one will go testing not in generic product okay so product means after making the prototype we will be testing since it is a software after the implementation after you design after you write a code we will be performing testing okay so what is testing about it is a process used to identify the correctness and completeness quality of developed computer software what are all the things these two terms include everything correctness and completeness whether my software is correct have i developed the right product my product is right is it correctly working first thing whether it serves the purpose of for what for which it is intended to develop okay say your program sometimes may work well but it will not give you the required output right so it is not having any error it is not having any error but there is a logical mistake due to which it is not able to give the output fine there is no syntax error there is no logical error too but still we don't get the output because there is no enough memory in my computer in my system even at that time also i will not be able to get the output there may be various reasons due to which i will not be able to get the exact intended <coughs> output so the testing is always to check whether my software is correct whether my software is complete okay so that will be done by various aspects so that may be for the quality of developed computer software we will be checking the quality of the software how good my product works so for the same purpose when two persons are writing the code persons are writing the code and both are getting the output again the best one has to be selected if that is the case what are all the parameters i can say number 1 could be how long a program takes to give the output okay between the time uh, time between uh, input and the output we will check so that will be done uh, through time complexity similarly how much is space occupied by your own when two programs are running good both are giving correct output and in that word, that case which one is good which one needs to be selected for that i may have various factors so by using all these things only i will be able to say a particular software is good is best okay fine so uh, it is your uh, proper definition for the testing it is a process of executing a program or application under positive and negative conditions by manual or automated means so uh, you need to underline this term manual and automated we have developed the program or an application okay so we will check either manually my program how uh, good it is working whether there is any error any fault or have we will face any failure or it could be a automated testing so two types of uh, main testing is manual testing and automated testing so this will be normally checking the specification of the software functionality of the software and performance of the software the last one only i meant about time and then space okay so how quickly is giving me the output how much space it occupies the uh, for the particular program so that will be uh, giving you the performance of a program the first two things spec of the program specifications of the program so i may tell that if you are writing a program you say string constant okay i may give a constraint you should not use the uh, what do you say built in functions you should not use the predefined functions to perform so and so program that is the spec i specify for 
a particular software. So whether we expect or satisfied or not. Whenever you are given, you are given some task, there may be some specification. So all the specifications are met. It is satisfying all the conditions what I have given. Number two is functionality. Whether it is able to give uh, 100 percentage output or partial output. Some modules may go well, some modules may not go well. Some uh, way I will be getting a proper output only for few things it may show some error. For example, you are using your um, your uh, credential to check your attendance and then marks. Okay? So any time when you check, the attendance is showing properly, whereas marks are not displayed properly. So the software is fine for certain point of time, but there is no error. There is no error, but still you are not getting the proper functionality. You are not getting the proper functionality. Or in other words, you can say, so in some premises only you are able to get the functions. When you go out of the college, you are not able to access a particular login. Okay, but then this premises only you are able to access like the functionality check or I am setting a constraint that anywhere else you should not access it. You are allowed to access only within the premises of our institution. If that is the case and if you go out also, if you check it, you are able to access uh, the dashboard, whatever the functionality I have set it, it's not going well. Am I right? So functionality, what I have meant is only at this particular condition it can work. When it goes beyond that it should not work. That is the functionality specification I am giving. But it is not going along with it. That like all those things have to be checked. Sometimes uh, there will be a login that could be accessed only by the teachers. Only by the teachers. Okay. But it is working for the teachers as well as the student. I don't see it is error. Correct? There is no error. But the thing is, functionality, what I have meant is, it should be accessible only by the teachers. If you are giving the student login, it should not work. That is the uh, intention towards that, but it is not satisfying. So all those things will be checked through the uh, testing. Testing objectives, these points are very, very important. Uncover as many as errors as possible in a given product okay so before you could deploy the product before you could launch your software before you could release your software we need to uh, check wherever there is a error where and all or and whichever conditions i'm facing some errors like when the persons are like-minded uh, with the same perspective i uh, approach something it may go well suddenly if i just give it to someone else please check with this for them it may show some error or they may be able to find out some bugs. Okay, so with various uh, scenario, with various group of people, environment, we need to uncover as many as errors. Okay, number two, testing objectives of testing. Number two, demonstrate a given software product matching its requirement specification because we have already studied what? Yes. SRS. What is SRS? Software Requirement Specification. So these are all the previous steps before you could go to designing part. Right? We first uh, document the SRS. So it has to go along with our SRS. Clear? So once you completed the coding, we need to check whether SRS is met. Whether it goes with the SRS. Number 3. Validate the quality of a software testing using the minimum cost and efforts. Okay, I would like to ask you one question here. This verification and validation are like, you know, similar words or companion words or a pair of words like the twins I can say. What is the difference or the meaning of verification and validation? Tell me, what is verification and what is validation? Okay, do not take much time for that. I give you in other words, verification is, am I developing a right product? Am I developing a right software? 
Validation is, is my product is right. What is the difference now? Amit, will you see a right product? Yes, both are? Yes, once you validate something, it is for sure. It is for sure. So verification, you are only checking it. You are only checking it. After the verification, if there is any bug, if any improvement needs to be taken place, you have to do it. So once you verify, but once it is validated, that cannot be changed. It is done. That's it. Okay. So always ver verify and then validate it. Verify and validate. While you are verifying something, you need to check whether the requirements are met. You are super duper in some programming. But for that sake, if you are uh, writing any program on your own, which is not at all required for a particular uh, requirement, then it is of no use. You, you know to develop a lot of products, but whether it is the right product to that particular scenario, that will be done with the verification. So once verification is done, validate with the various data set. Validate with the various data set. Yes, it is approved, it is correct. See, sometimes what happens, you are doing your lab programming, you will get the output. The moment you get the output, you will call your teacher, yes ma'am, I got the output, fine. I can also just see the uh, output on your screen and then give the verification. So and that is only verification. When it comes for validation, I need to give my own input, various set of input. With various set of input, also input is working well. That is how it is validation. Okay, with various kind of input parameters, if I am accepting your software or the program, that is validation. Once I validate it, there will not be any problem at all with the software. Fine. So, validate the quality of a software testing using the minimum cost and efforts. Generate high quality test cases, perform effective tests and issue correct and helpful problem reports. So, these are all the main objectives why we go for testing. Right. So, here are a few terms which you need to know. All look uh, maybe similar, but there may be a slight difference between each of them. Here, what do you mean by error? You know very well the concept, you know very well the syntax, even then you may do a mistake. Okay? So for if or for or while or function, whatever it may be, a human error may happen in the syntax or even the logic. That is error. Error will be done normally by human. It's a human action that produces the incorrect result that produces the fault. Okay, when there is a error in a particular module on the whole throughout the program or for the whole program, there will be a faulty result. Like you are uh, writing your coding for the embedded system. For the embedded system. So there is an error in your coding which is being embedded with the electronic device due to which there will be a fault on the whole device. Okay, so a human error also may lead to a fault in the whole system. Number two, bug. What is the bug? The presence of error at the time of execution of the software. So this is what we say is the debugging. At the time of execution, sometimes some error may happen. One is a human error. The second thing, due to memory or due to some other reasons, interrupt or some other devices problem in the system also, there may be a bug. Okay, next. Fault. State of the software caused by an error. State of the software caused by an error. As I mentioned, human mistake, error, error turned into a fault in the system. Okay? So, the software will malfunction due to the error created by the human. So, human error may lead to fault in the whole system. Failure. Totally this out now. We say it is a failure. Deviation of the software from its expected result, it is an event. Okay, you say that this will be the output of my system, but it does not. I am designing a car, okay. I am designing a car and I say that I have fixed some sensor and all this car will go. Uh, suppose any obstacle in the if it finds, it itself will decide where to be diverted and it will go. This is the uh, requirement or uh, I have said about my product okay but when it is running 
what is happening? It is finding the obstacle. But as I mentioned, it will take uh, its own direction and move. It is not doing. So it's a failure system. What I said that whenever there is obstacle found by the sensors fixed in the car, it will take the diversion from that direction to somewhere else, wherever it is a possible direction. But as I mentioned, it is not working. So it is a failure model. There are so many, even vehicle or any devices you consider, it may be electronic device or it may be a uh, vehicle or whatever it may be the system, it is intended to do something when it is not doing the intended purpose, we say that it is a failure model. It is a failure model because the said output is different but the produced output is totally deviated from the intended output. So that we say it is a failure. So I hope this you are familiar with STLC Software Development Life Cycle. The standard model used to work this at all you know. Let me go little uh, fast. STLC is the first step, origin point of any software development, right? So which model I am going to take for a particular software. Shall I move forward?
So how are we going to do the testing? Is it going to be a unit testing or it is an integration testing or it is a system testing, regression testing, where it is going to be a manual testing or automated testing? What kind of testing I am going to do here? And who is going to do a testing? All those things will be planned and then decide test cases. Various test cases have to be developed to do test. Nowadays, various testing tools are available. Testing tools are available. So for each testing, we have testing tools. So what kind of tool I am going to use? What kind of cases I am going to set for that particular testing? Those things will be designed. Execute the test cases. Manual or automated. When it comes to manual, we have three types. White box, black box and grey box testing. Testing. Okay. So when it goes to automated, again various cases are there. Then report the defects. After the testing, if there is any bug, if there is any defect, if there is any improvement required, all those things will be reported by the testing result. As a testing uh, report, it will be uh, listed out all the defects in it and then perform the regression testing. So this regression testing only will have all usability, feasibility, compatibility, whether people like the particular process, all those things will be going as a next level. First, working, functional testing will see non-functional testing we will see and then we go for the regression testing that are not next step. So then perform the analysis and then summary the report. Even to analyze the test report also there will be experts. Okay, whether the test be many a times you are going to present something. You are asked to present something and there will be some judges who are nowhere connected with this process what is going on. What kind of report they can say? Generically, they will give some, they will give some report and go. But actually, to be a judge, they must be into the process. Like they must know what exactly the program is intended for. For example, IAP. Okay, you are doing IAP. Internal judges or external judges, whoever it may be, they must have a clear system study, and they must know your level. Okay, and what are all the technologies you have learned up to your level? With all that, they should give a report. Okay, so that report again should be gone through by the people who are into the process. Only then they will be able to give a reply for it. If not, again there won't be any improvement. They say that these, these, these things are all can be done. Whether it is possible up to our level, where it is it can be enforced to do that, it is a very, very small company where there are only few employees are there. Okay, so they have planned to design a software to sort out some particular problem. Okay, with the available resources, they are making something and the target audience also will be of a smaller community only. But to judge that, to test that, to analyze that, if I call someone who is from some MNC, obviously their expectation level will be too high. They cannot be able to analyze the report. So that will not create any impact on the testing. So always this test plan must be correct, per perfectly done and the analysis must be done perfectly. Then go for the summary report. So all the steps are very important for a testing. How the test plan should be? Test plan should be. What is a test plan? It is a systematic approach to test a system that is a software. So here, whatever we speak about as test system is nothing but software what we develop. The plan typically contains a detailed understanding of what the eventual testing workflow will be. How exactly we are going to do the testing? If it is a unit testing, only for one particular module. If it is an integration, that is what will be done in the test plan. What kind of testing we are going to do? Unit testing, integration testing, regression testing, system testing. What kind of testing we are going to do? What will be the flow of the testing? All those things will be uh, planned in the testing plan. Test cases. So what could be the test cases? What do you mean by a test case? Santosh, you can uh, please be seated. It is a specific process.
procedure of testing a particular requirement. So testing plan is what kind of testing we are going to do, who is going to do the testing, how we are going to do the testing. Number two, test cases. So how do we design a test case? So we are only our SRS will come to the picture because it has to meet the specification of the I mean, requirement specification. So testing a particular requirement, whether this requirement is satisfied or not. So each and every requirement will be considered accordingly the testing cases will be designed. It will include identification of specific requirement tested. Number one, the requirement specifications are tested. Number two, test cases, success or failure criteria when you undergo your module or your software into that test cases whether it gives a positive or negative results, success or failure. Next, specific steps to execute the test like you know uh, it is the integration test. It is the integration test. What do you mean by integration test? Kamalesh, what do you mean by integration test? Not to offend you. Anybody can give me the answer. What do you mean by integration test? Srinivasan, what do you mean by integration test? Get up. Yes, sir. What do you mean by integration test? You cannot study it. It was dealt with the first two units itself. It's from both of you. So, unit test is on a particular module. Integration test when you combine more than one modules. How the interaction is taken place, how the communication is taken place, how the integration between those two things are taken place. For example, module 1 is going to produce the output which will be given as input to the second module. Imagine now, first module is not tested, but the second module is tested. Second module is tested, so I am performing integration test. The order is not correct because first module may have some bugs in it may have some error in it. Without that, I have an assumption that second is right, so I am integrating and I am performing an integration test. Now it will give me only the result of the integration, interaction between two modules. It will not be able to say where is the error. Am I right? It will not be able to say me whether the error comes out from module 1 or module 2. It can only give me the error of the interaction. Then I have to do the backtracking. Module 2, check thoroughly and then go to module 1. Once again you check thoroughly, then you perform the integration test. Okay, so the test cases when we are defining how we are, the order how we are going to follow is very very important. Specific steps to execute the test. So if you are, if you assume there are only two modules and you are going to do integration testing or the system testing, Unit testing must be completed. Integration testing must be completed to go for system testing. So what would be the order when there are more than one modules? Unit testing should be done. Integration, uh, I mean integration testing must be done. Only then the whole system testing. On the whole system testing. Okay. So finally test the data. Give the data and check. So all these things under test cases. Next, as I said, verification versus validation. Verification versus validation. What is verification? The software should conform to its specification. Whatever the specification I have mentioned, so that it should go well. Number two, validation. The software should do what the user really requires. What is the exact output required by that particular software? That is the validation. So next, testing methodologies. So I will go with the next PPT where in detail it will give a resistant name only overview. Okay, because in your syllabus also black box testing and white box testing is given promptly because they, uh, they are very very important testing methods and they belong to manual testing. There is one more testing is where gray box testing but it is not given in your syllabus. What is the black box testing? What is the black box testing? So black box testing, no knowledge of internal program design or code is required. Okay, so to perform 
a particular software using a black box testing. I don't know. I, I don't have to know uh, the language what is used to implement that program. We have uh, implemented a software using Java to perform the testing. The internal code developed knowledge. I mean, language knowledge is not required. Tests are based on the requirements and functionality. Only these two things are the main focus of the black box testing. Okay? What are all the two things? The one is the requirement. Whether the requirements are met. Number two, whether its functions are not. Okay? You, would, you, you may cheat them by writing a code in C++ saying that it is Java. But the test, black box tester will give success result only. To get my point, because it doesn't check which language is used. It is least bothered about what the language, uh, internet technology or anything is used in it. It will only focus on the requirements and the and the functionality. Next comes to white box testing. What is white box testing? Knowledge of the internal program design and code is required. Say sometimes you might have written a program without using a function. But you are asked to write a function. You are asked to write using a function. You are asked to uh, use, I mean, write a program without using a built-in function. But you would have used built-in functions. Okay. So these things can be when I know the knowledge in that particular internal part, programming language only, I will be able to use it. That part will be taken care by the white box testing. Not only that, Tests are based on coverage of code statements, branches, paths and conditions. This is what I mentioned. Okay. So, what kind of uh, condition statements you are using? Conditions how you are using, path how you are using, branches, statements. All those things will be tested by white box testing. Correct? So, white box testing 
done by the developers itself. Who is developing the code? They themselves will do the unit testing. Next comes to integration testing. So once all the modules have been unit tested, integration testing is performed. So all the individual modules should be tested. It is a systematic system. This is actually a uh, integration system and system testing we can say in any way but please remember when there are only two modules when you combine integration as well as system we will say correct when there are only two modules here and integration testing as well as system testing will be same when there are multiple modules when you join modules one by one after the other you need to do integration and then only you will do the system testing test to identify errors associated with interfacing. Module 1, Module 2 are connected in interface. So the interface test will be done. Then Module 3, now Module 1 and 2 are already you have uh, attached. Now it has become a single module. With that you are adding Module 3 now. So now again there are only two modules. You are adding both of them. Again perform integration testing like that you will be Accumulating everything. Okay, so that's the reason integration testing can even be called as system testing. So the types: big bang integration testing. Please note down this: top-down integration, bottom-up integration, and mixed integration testing. So these are all the various types in integration testing. Next comes to system testing. So I am giving overview about the testing. So in next class, I will deal uh, separately about one by one. Again, it will not be much contained around. Okay? Fine. System testing. The system as a whole is tested to uncover the requirement error. It's clear with that? So unit testing. And when there are more than one module, combine and then test. So keep combining the modules into the existing module and undergo testing. Finally, we will combine everything made it as a single software and that will be tested using a system testing. Okay, fine. So, verifies that all system elements work properly and that overall system function and performance has been achieved. That is, overall systems achievement. Overall systems achievement. Like, uh, normally we do that. When you are doing your project and all, you will understand that. So, first of all, it's not few modules you will just develop. Okay, and then you develop some more modules. Then you combine, few it will be working. But when you attach with where it is required, or it is an embedded one, or you are programming for a hardware device, in that case, as a program it may go well. When it is embedded with the hardware, whether it is working out or not will be checked with the system testing. Correct? So when I design something, I program something, uh, I just, you know, in the chip and the chip is being used in some uh, PCB. When I attach, when I insert my chip in the PCB, when it works only, I say that it is successful. Otherwise, as a program, it goes well. But as a system, it is not working. So whether as a system it is working or not, is there uh, any error created by that or any improvisation is required, those things will be tested by the system testing. There are various types in system testing, alpha testing, beta testing, acceptance testing and performance testing. Alpha, beta, acceptance and performance testing are the various types of system testing. Types of performance testing. Types of, because alpha, beta are not much required for you. Oh, I have come here. Yeah, you can just go through that. What is the alpha testing? What is the beta testing? What is the acceptance and performance? Alpha now it is carried out by the testing within the developing organization. Within the developing organization, it is not given to the external people. So alpha test is the first level testing. This is after after your unit testing and integration testing because these are all the types of what testing which means you have made it as a complete system so once the system is completed it will be tested by the team which is inside the organization 
which may name it as alpha testing. Next comes to beta testing. So beta testing means it is performed by a selected group of friendly customers. Friendly customers. Like I can assume like this. I think people you are developing something but then your peer members only it is uh, tested. That is called alpha testing. Okay. So if we give the same thing to the CSE department and ask them to test we can say it is a beta testing. So the team which is associated to that organization, the team which is close to that organization <coughs> may help them to test the system which we call it as beta testing. Third is acceptance testing. What is acceptance testing? It is performed by the customer to determine whether to accept or reject the delivery of the system. <coughs> this is what most of the time you may see this marketing executives and all they will not the complete uh, they will not make the complete thing they will carry and they will show is it okay uh, or do you like this you give us some feedback something and all they do the people who are starting in some business and all they will go to the customers and collect their feedback okay whether they will accept it or reject it most of the items when we see in the market or when we see on the roadside also it will attract us they will by it. Sometimes we don't like it. So it will be tested by the customers to whom it is intended for. <coughs> number one, developer of the same organization. Number two, a friendly team. Number because they may not be able to give the genuine report. Okay. So the third thing is the one who is going to use the product, use the software. Fourth test is performance test. It is carried out to check whether the system meets the Non-functional requirements identified in the SRS document. Non-functional requirement. Very important thing if you see user desirability testing. User desirability testing which means whether user likes to use it or not for the testing. This we have done in design technology itself. Design thinking subject we have already studied about user desirability. Number two, compatibility. It may be good, it may like, it may attract the people, but they are not comfortable in using it. You are, uh, you know, you are giving a software, the software could be used only in a computer, but you are all carrying only mobile phone. Since you are not able to use it, it is not compatible with your mobile phone. It is not a mobile app, we are not able to use it. Okay, so I cannot say that I am going to give this app to all the college students because they will not be able to use it at all the time. Okay, compatibility test. So these things come under performance testing. Next comes to types of performance testing, stress testing, volume testing, configuration testing, compatibility testing, recovery, maintenance 